No way. It's the bastard Johnny. I'm going to get him. Hi everybody and welcome to the channel. I am Richard. Today I'm gonna bring you downtown and I am going to take you with me on a ride to chase this little fella right here. This guy name is Johnny, also called JTQ. Johnny the Quick. Nobody really likes this guy. He's like some kind of shady political figure and everybody wants to take him out. I'm talking about downtown chase. This is a cool game with little cool miniatures in it and there's cards and it will take you out on a wild ride through town to try to take out Johnny. I'm going to show you an overview of this game. I'm going to show you how to play it and go through some of the rules. This game will be out on Kickstarter in October. There will be links down in the description later on. So take a look at it. But first, let's look at this game. So this is the setup of the game. You have the big board in the middle for all players to reach. Each player should get their player board along with their corresponding miniature. You have the different decks up here, the weapon decks, the location decks. You've got the dices, the miniatures, and on the side, which you can see, we have the assassination board. There are a bunch of cool characters in this game for you to choose from, all having their own special abilities, having their own health status, but they also have their own corresponding little miniature here to go along with the game. These are the ones that you will use to move your character along with the track. But you also have a little police officer here. They're actually put out in the game to block off roads and you can bribe them. Then you have the little speed obstacles here blocking off the road so you can't move that little direction. And there's a cool miniature for every character. Now these are 3D printed so the real thing once the game is out will probably look a little bit better than this ones. But I still think this looks cool. Once you have put out the board, the miniatures, giving each player their player board, it's time to hand out some weapons. You should take one of each of the different weapons mix them up really 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 good like i'm doing right now hand out one to each player then you should take the runs that are left and put them back into the weapon pile next thing we need to do is to take the five special location cards these ones can be found in the interaction deck you should take them shuffle them up real good then take two of them and put them back in the box without looking at them the rest of them will be mixed in with the location deck again. Each player should also be dealt one interaction card and one location card. Each player needs to pick their color and put it down on the start of the victory point track. Then you need to take the round tracker and put it on the start of the round tracker. Each player now takes their little miniature and puts them down in the safe zone that has the same color as the token that you have just chosen. Johnny TQ is put in the middle of the board on the spot where there is an X. The starting player is the one that rolls the highest number. Would you look at that? The last thing we need to do before actually start playing the game is to pick one random root card. These cards are the ones that decide which root Johnny will move. Once we have picked out one at random, the rest of them goes back in the box. The game starts by moving Johnny the Quick around the fields. Players cannot interfere or change his path during the first two rounds. He will follow the path that we have just randomly selected. The ones looking like this, remember? On this there's a red line and Johnny will follow that line for at least two rounds. We need to start to see how many moves he can make by rolling the die. He got three. Moving him one, two, three spots. At each circle here is one movement. Johnny the Quick will follow this move to the end if a player does not interfere and change his path along the way. 
From round number 3, players can actively interfere him. After that, this card is removed from the game, and Johnny the Quick will follow these two dice instead, rolling this one to give him how many steps he will move, and rolling this one to see where he will actually turn. So if, for example, Johnny TQ is standing here, we should roll this to determine how many steps he will take. But when he comes to the crossroad here, where there are different paths, we need to roll the direction die to see which way he will choose. If a player uses the special location card to transfer Johnny the Quick, they need to take up his little miniature and put him next to the location with a cross. Then the player needs to determine which direction Johnny is facing, and he actually have a little arrow down on the base to show which way he is heading. So let's say here. But if Johnny the Quick starts in a crossroad, we should start by rolling the direction die to determine which way he is heading, and then we need to roll how many steps he will move. Johnny the Quick may never move into a player's safe house. So now that we're done moving Johnny around, it's actually the player's turn, starting with the first player, me. What a player can do during their turn, the first thing they can do is to pick up four cards from the piles. You are allowed to pick one card at a time, take a look at it, and then decide which card you want to pick next. But you can never pick more than two cards from the same pile. Once you've picked up the cards on your hand and are more or less happy about what you got, it's time for you to actually do some things with your miniature and start moving them around the track. You can play as many cards as you would like to during your turn, but you can only have a maximum of 8 cards on your hand, and there's a bunch of different things you can do. If you are on the same location as Johnny the Quick and you have the location card, you can try to assassinate him. You have a bunch of interaction cards where you can interact with Johnny the Quick or the other players in different ways. You can slow them down, you can make them discard cards, you can take cards, and so on. And then you also have the weapon cards. These ones are needed for you to try to assassinate Mr. Johnny. You can choose to go with the metro around the map. There are four different metro lines with four different colors. And depending on which color you have, this one for example is the yellow line, you can use that metro to move around quick on the map. You can also put out roadblocks on the way, making it harder for the other players or Johnny the Quick to go around the block. Even blocking it off completely, forcing them to take another path. Or why not put out a police officer somewhere on the street, just making the lives a little bit harder for your opponents. There are tons of things that you can choose to do in this game. You can put up roadblocks, like I said, you can tear down roadblocks. You can put up the speed of the different players, you can take the metro, you can slow down the Johnny the Quick, you can slow him up, you can take up police forces, you can bribe the police, you can choose to fight, you can do a lot of things. Players can move the amount of movement that they have on their player board. If you move your amount of steps and end up at the same field as an opponent, it's time for you to duel. Every time one player moves into another player's circle on the board, it's time to throw out some punches. First, the attacking player will roll two d6 to determine their agility. Then the defending player will roll two d6 to determine their agility. Which one has the highest one is the one that wins. If the attacker wins, he will throw out punches that is equal to his punch range, putting down their health points and one stamina point. If there's a tie, both players will lose one health point and one stamina point. If the defender wins, the attacker will actually lose one health point and one stamina point. When you're in a duel, you can also use the special ability cards here, giving you more strength, or maybe taking down the strength of your opponent, or choose to cancel the duel completely. Of course, you can try to assassinate that bastard Johnny, but you need to be on an adjacent field of the same color. You also need to have the correct location card and weapon card on your hand. On the weapons that you're trying to assassinate Johnny the Quick with, you will find a pattern. 
This pattern will be laid out on the assassination board. You will need to roll a die 6 to see if you actually hit your target. Let me show you. This is the assassination chart. The symbol down here is the symbol that represents the symbol on my weapon, showing where I actually hit. Now, this is a prototype, so this will probably look a bit different once the game is done. To see where I actually hit, I need to roll the d6. Moving this pattern, the amount of spaces the die says. And I can choose to move it either up or horizontal. I choose to move it three steps over here. Now it's time for the bodyguard to roll. And they are moving this one, representing where the bodyguard is. But it's another player that should roll for the bodyguard, determining which way they should go. My goal is to come up here to actually be able to hit Johnny the Quick. The bodyguard's goal is to be able to block me out. So here for example we have managed to get one plus one hit, giving us a total of two. But the gun itself has an attack value of three. After this, players need to roll two d6 and add to their scores. But Johnny the Quick can protect himself. One of the opposing players need to roll two d6 and figure out how much defense value Johnny the Quick have. To figure that out, we need to look at the table down on the bottom of the assassination chart. He has a predetermined defense value of 4. Depending on what value you get on the die, Johnny the Quick will defend himself with that corresponding value. Depending on what the final result from the assassination attempt is, different things is going to happen. You might just miss the target completely, but you will still get two victory points and keep your cards. If you have hit one point, but determined that it's not really worth it because you will probably just miss, you still get two victory points and keep your cards. If you shoot, but you completely miss, you lose all your cards and you go back to the safe cows, but you get three victory points. But if you shoot and it's a draw, you get to stay on the location you're at, you lose all your cards, but you get four victory points. And if you manage to shoot and take Johnny out, well, congratulations, you just won the game. If you do not manage to take out Johnny by the end of the 12th round, the game is over and the player with the highest amount of victory points wins the game. So there you have it people, that was Downtown Chase for you. This is a funny, funny and fast, fast game. And there's so many options for you, what you can do during your turn, that it just never really gets boring. This almost felt like playing Grand Theft Auto the board game edition. It was a lot and a lot of fun. And you really have no idea who's gonna win this game, I mean, you just play along and you just roam down the streets in different ways, you use the metro, you block off streets. It's a lot and a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed this game. The Kickstarter is out soon, like I said, the link will be down in the description, so go in and check it out if you thought that this looked interesting. If you liked this video, please remember to just give me a thumbs up, maybe throw in a comment there. What did you think about this game? Are you gonna back it? You gonna check it out? I wanna know. If you like the videos I make, if you like this channel, please subscribe to it. It really brings a smile to my face every time. And until next time, people, please keep on spreading that board game love that I know you all have. Peace.